In the year 69 of the Cosmic Era, warfare was forever changed by the debut of Zaft's Jin mobile suits, the first operational units of their kind, though outnumbered, the Jins achieved a historic victory against the plant sponsor nation's forces, decimating their mobile armors and securing the colonies. In the face of this new offensive threat, the Earth Alliance initiated a top-secret counteroffensive, Project G. Their objective? Develop countermeasures specifically designed to neutralize and defeat the Jin mobile suits and their powerful conventional arms. By CE-71, Project G had succeeded unveiling the GATX Gundams integrated with revolutionary phase shift armor. This groundbreaking technology could significantly reduce damage from the Jin's ballistic and physical weaponry. Phase shift armor was the Earth Alliance's direct response to the tactical superiority demonstrated by the Jin mobile suits. The concept of phase shift armor was initially formulated by Dr. Maurice Gale, a professor at the prestigious Heliopolis Industrial College. While the Advanced Space Dynamic Corporation continued researching this technology, it was eventually adopted by the ambitious G Project. Under the leadership of Lieutenant Maru Ramius, the development of phase shift armor was finalized at the Atlantic Federation's facilities. The concept involves the application of an energy field to negate the effects of physical impacts and kinetic energy, which doesn't have a direct real-world counterpart in the exact way it's presented in the anime. However, the idea of enhancing armor capabilities or using energy to protect against damage does have some parallels in ongoing scientific research and technological development, albeit in early or speculative stages. ELRA or electric reactive armor, which leverages a high-energy electrical response to neutralize incoming projectiles, offers a compelling parallel to understanding the phase shift armor's energy-based defense mechanism. Check out Task and Purposes video for a full explanation. Link is in the description. Imagine, for a moment, a mobile suit encased in phase shift armor operating somewhat similarly to ELRA, but with a few futuristic twists. In this theoretical scenario, the armor doesn't just protect against physical impacts through sheer hardness or material strength. Instead, it employs a high-energy field that envelops the suit. This field, analogous to the charged plates in ELRA, is in a state of high potential energy, maintained by the mobile suit's power supply, its own version of the high-energy capacitor. When an enemy projectile or melee attack makes contact with the suit's armor, this could theoretically complete a circuit, like the munition completing the circuit in ELRA, instead of causing an electric current to flow through a penetrative jet, as what would happen in ELRA, the completion of the circuit in phase shift armor might trigger the field to rapidly discharge its stored energy. The discharge wouldn't be to vaporize or liquefy the incoming attack, as ELRA aims to do, but rather to absorb, diffuse, or otherwise neutralize the kinetic energy of the attack. This could be envisioned as the energy field momentarily intensifying or changing its characteristics to provide an impenetrable barrier, making the armor impervious to the attack, whether it be a bullet, a beam, or even a physical blow. This high-energy field could theoretically act on the kinetic and potential energy of the incoming threat, dispersing it across the field in a way that the underlying physical armor never actually experiences the full impact. The fundamental constraint is that the phase shift armor draws its immense power requirements directly from the mobile suit's onboard energy reserves. During wartime, the existence of neutron jammers forced these mobile suits to rely solely on finite energy batteries, with few options for true unlimited runtimes. As a result, only a strictly rationed amount of power can ever be allocated to the extraordinarily demanding phase shift armor system itself. This limited energy budget renders the armor incapable of withstanding the highest forms of energy weapons like powerful beam weaponry. Even against physical projectiles, the phase shift armor has limits. The strike mobile suit, for example, could only theoretically resist around 76 missiles before full energy depletion. Herein lies the critical vulnerability. Should the mobile suit's power be fully drained through extended operations, the phase shift armor will automatically deactivate. 
leaving the mobile suit's underlying superstructure exposed to any incoming threat, no matter how minor. A powerless phase shift system essentially defaults to the protective capabilities of traditional heavy composite armor plating. This risk of spontaneous full system failure necessitates design redundancies, like carrying physical shields with anti-beam coating, or laminated protective layers to guard against the inherent weaknesses of the phase shift system. Otherwise, a single well-planned depletion attack could completely bypass this revolutionary defensive technology. While the original phase shift armor represented a major defensive innovation, its immense energy demands and vulnerability to power depletion drove the development of an enhanced successor, the trans-phase armor system. During the First Alliance Plant War, the Earth Alliance recognized the inherent weaknesses of the phase shift armor technology. This spurred an intensive research effort to create a more energy-efficient and robust defensive system, culminating in the advent of trans-phase armor. Transphase incorporates a double-layered design that aims to mitigate the biggest operational limitation of its predecessor. The outer layer comprises conventional heavy composite armor plating, while an inner phase shift armor layer lies dormant behind it. This inner energy deflection field only activates when the outer physical armor is breached by overwhelming forces. The first implementations of this new transphase system debuted on the Earth Alliance's second-generation G project Gundams. The GATX-131 Calamity, GATX-252 Forbidden, and GATX-370 Raider. As the pivotal war escalated, transphase armor rapidly proliferate to a number of the Alliance's limited production mobile suit models, including the GATX-133 Sword Calamity, GATX-255 Forbidden Blue, and GATX-333 Raider Full Spec. By keeping the power-hungry phase shift projection system off until actively needed, transphase prevents the continuous consumption of huge energy reserves just for standard armor operation. It dramatically extends the operational endurance of the mobile suit by rationing its finite energy reserves. With the phase shift layer normally deactivated, the energy normally expended on constantly generating defensive fields can instead be redirected to other paramount systems like propulsion and beam weaponry. Once the outer layer is compromised by sustaining damage beyond its protective threshold, only then does the transphase system root power to activating its interior phase shift deflection grid as a last hardened defensive line. This approach allows preserving energy until absolutely necessary, while still leveraging the unmatched protective capabilities of projected phase shift fields. However, the core vulnerability of phase shift technology remains. Once this secondary inner energy shield is ultimately depleted through extended breach exposure, the mobile suit is left with effectively no protective shielding whatsoever. But the double-layered trans-phase design buys pilots critical extra time to reposition or seek cover before such catastrophic armor failure. The development of N-Jammer cancelers allowed for the potential use of nuclear reactors as energy sources for phase-shift armored mobile suits. With access to virtually unlimited energy supplies provided by these compact nuclear generators, the reliance on short-lasting battery packs is eliminated. The energy-hungry phase-shift armor layers can now theoretically remain activated indefinitely, without draining reserves. This technology breakthrough negates the critical weakness of power depletion, that could render the advanced phase shift and transphase armor useless after extended combat operations. It ensures the protective energy fields remain projected at full strength continuously. Additionally, reactors provide far greater energy output than batteries. That said, N-Jammer cancelers likely introduce new limitations around radiation shielding, heat management, and the inherent dangers of unshielded nuclear technology being compromised during combat operations. The variable phase shift armor represents the next evolutionary leap in phase shift defensive technology developed by Zaft during the interim between the two alliance plant wars. 
Unlike conventional phase shift armor which projects a static monolithic energy field, variable phase shift allows for dynamically varying the strength and energy consumption characteristics of the protective field in real time. This variability is a critical advancement, as it enables automatically adjusting the armor's field parameters to suit different combat configurations and situations a mobile suit may encounter. The variable phase shift system can be pre-programmed with multiple field strength settings optimized for different modes of operation. By only energizing the protective fields to the level needed for a given scenario, variable phase shift provides significantly improved energy efficiency over its phase shift predecessors, which continuously consumed power at maximum field strengths. This energy-saving capability directly translates into enhanced operational endurance for variable phase shift equipped mobile suits. A striking byproduct of the dynamic field modulation is that the mobile suit's outer colorization can shift in response to changes in the variable phase shift energy projection. This serves as a visual indicator of the armor's active field configuration. Zaft first incorporated variable phase shift technology into their second stage series of next-generation mobile suits like the ZGMFX56S Impulse Gundam. The Impulse featured at least three preset variable phase shift modes tailored to different silhouette combat pack configurations. Later in Cosmic Era 73, the Earth Alliance managed to acquire variable phase shift armor data by stealing three of Zaft's second stage units from the Armory 1 military colony. They rapidly integrated this new tech into their own Aktian project, producing formidable variable phase shift equipped mobile suits such as the GATX 105E Strike Noir Gundam. In parallel, the renegade Zaft faction terminal also obtained variable phase shift schematics and incorporated the system into two of the most powerful mobile suits ever constructed, the ZGMFX-19A Infinite Justice and the ZGMFX-20A Strike Freedom Gundam. We've now covered the evolution of phase shift armor technologies like trans-phase and variable phase shift, as well as how the existence of neutron jammers both drove their development and limited their full capabilities. However, we've only briefly touched on what these neutron jammers actually are and their strategic impact. So in the next video, we're going to take a deeper dive specifically into neutron jammer technology itself. I'll provide more details on how these specialized jamming devices work their role in the cosmic era conflicts, and why their proliferation was such a pivotal factor shaping the progression of mobile suit power systems. Subscribe and stay tuned.